When a fighter gets punched in the head, the full damage of that punch can take up to 10 years to show. Yes, that's right, the effects of a punch are not immediate. What? So when you get punched in the head, or if you get punched in the head, or even worse, get a concussion, the full effects can take some time to show. How scary is that? According to the Brain Injury Research Institute, each year in the US, players of sports and recreational activities receive between 2.5 and 4 million concussions. So how dangerous are all of these concussions? And what exactly happens to the brain when you get a concussion? Well, on this video, I'm gonna go over that, and I'm gonna talk about what happens to the brain and give you tips on what to do if you think you've experienced a concussion and what signs and symptoms you should look out for so you can keep yourself as safe as possible. My name is Sarah Jeffries. I'm a registered nurse here in Los Angeles, California with a master's of science in nursing and experience in ER nursing and clinical education. The reason I wanted to talk about this topic is not just because I'm an ER nurse, but because I'm married to a boxer named Tony Jeffries. He's an Olympic bronze medalist from the Beijing 2008 Olympic games. He's a light heavyweight or he was He's more like a heavyweight now. He's given and taken quite a few heavy shots over the years. In fact, he worked out that since the age of 10, when he first started to box, he's taken around 50,000 shots to the head. And he can remember a fair few times that he's been concussed. Such scary stuff. He even forgot that he had a girlfriend at one point. For me, when I think about and talk about concussions, it's not just from a professional perspective, it's really personal. Brain health is something we as a family take really serious. Way back at the start of nursing school, when I first met my husband and I was learning about concussions and the brain anatomy, I honestly thought like concussion was just a little bit of dizziness, maybe you vomited, and then after a few hours of feeling groggy with a headache, you were fine. And then life can resume as normal, but this isn't the case. The damage can carry on for much, much longer. When you try and understand the effects and the pathophysiology of a concussion, you first have to understand what the brain is made of and how it works. So let's go way into the brain on a cellular level and try and understand from the start. So the brain is made up of grey and white matter. It's soft fatty tissue. Imagine like the consistency of jelly or jello. It's wrapped in protective layers. I talk about these layers in my uh, knockout video. And then it's neatly packed inside of our skull. So it is a delicate organ and it seems well shielded. But, and this is a big but, when the head is hit hard and suddenly the brain shifts inside of the skull and unlike jello, it isn't uniform in shape. It's made up of a huge network of about 90 billion neurons. Now these neurons send signals through their long axons to communicate and control our bodies. This spangly structure of the axons makes them very fragile, so even a small bump to the head can have an impact, and over time they can stretch and tear, and that not only disrupts their ability to communicate, but also when the destroyed axons begin to deteriorate even more, they can release toxins, and that can cause the death of other neurons too. So, how do you know you have a concussion? Well, concussion symptoms show up differently in every person, because every brain is different. Symptoms can range from from blackouts, headaches, blurred vision, balance problems, altered mood, altered behavior, problems with memory, problems with thinking, sleeping, and even the onset of anxiety and depression. People with concussion can also experience something called post-concussion syndrome or PCS. People with PCS may experience constant headaches. They can experience learning difficulties and even behavioral symptoms. And this can affect your personal relationships. And the scary thing is, PCS can affect you for months or years after the injury. Trying to play through a concussion, even for only a few minutes, or returning to your sport too soon after a concussion, makes it more likely for you to develop PCS. Now, concussion can be hard to diagnose because the symptoms unfold slowly over time, and that's often really true with subconcussive impacts, which result from low impact jolts to the head, and these also cause concussions. But this category of injury doesn't cause notable symptoms right away, but it can lead to severe degenerative brain disease over time and if it happens repeatedly and damages the structural integrity of the brain's axons it's like similar to how a rope will feel when the fibers start to fray. The data shows that at least among football players between 50 and 80 percent of concussions go unreported and untreated. Sometimes it's because the pressure to keep going despite the fact that something might be wrong is just too much but it shouldn't undermine the recovery process. Our brains aren't invincible. They still need us to shield them from harm and help them undo 
do any damage once it's been done. Disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only and not a replacement for medical advice or treatment. So what do you do if you think you have a concussion? Once you've been cleared by a medical professional to rule out any life-threatening damage, the advice that they'll give you is to physically and mentally rest to recover from the concussion. Although you'll need more rest and sleep than normal, you don't need to 100% completely rest. In fact, some research has shown that too much mental rest can actually lengthen the recovery period and make you more sensitive to activities when you return to normal. So it's about finding that balance. Instead of stopping activities entirely, learn to recognize the triggers that brought on the concussion symptoms. Start back slowly and then in small amounts, when symptoms occur, back off and rest. It's okay to do some of the activities that don't make you feel worse, but limit activities that worsen your symptoms. For example, some activities that may worsen the symptoms of concussion include texting, spending a lot of time looking at your smartphone, reading, watching television, playing video games, that's another big one, listening to loud music, that's really stimulating, physical activity, like really extreme physical activity I'm talking about. As your symptoms improve, you can continue to add a few more things back into your daily life, but just be really careful and pay close attention to how you're feeling. Click here if you wanna know how to treat fighter injuries and what to do about them.